Okay, good evening. Today is day 143 and read the Bible in 365 days. Well, just to let you know, uh, <laughs> it, it, I started in 2015 and uh, read all the way to, I think, just about before June. And then uh, that's when I started to uh, run for city council. Uh, the reason why I ran was that I had been speaking I guess earlier this year, I had been speaking on um, traditional marriage and uh, speaking all over the state. We were trying to get politicians involved and they weren't getting involved. And, um, you know, we were trying to get pastors. I mean, at one point we had called over a thousand pastors to try to get them to show up. And um, none of them were showing up or saying anything about this um, key legislation that was coming down. So. We decided, I decided, and I was asking myself what we what what we needed to do in order to get, you know, people, more prominent people involved. And, you know, and I was trying to figure out, well, you know, it's just me, a little bitty me asking, and I'm nobody. So I started thinking, okay, well, what do I need to do? Maybe I need to be a pastor of a big church. Well, that takes years, <laughs> you know. And um, in the past, I was thinking about running for office anyway and the uh, city council election was coming up so i prayed about it god put on my heart to run and the guy I was running against he was a 12 year incumbent and um <laughs> it was funny when i told people you know when i was speaking at some of those uh, uh events and they called me a candidate and then i told them you know who told the people who i was running against a lot of them just laughed because they believed that i had no no chance at all and it wasn't just me, it was a lot of my other friends that were also running. And um, so, I mean, most of them got the money, most of them got the support. Me, you know, it was just, okay, it's a good little thing you're running and you get some good experience, but next time, you know, we'll, you'll win next time. So, and make a long story short, um, ran, um, he got 48%, I got 28%, and then we had two other people. So the way we do it here is unless you get 50 plus 1%, then you don't, you don't you don't win you have to do a runoff so we went into a runoff uh god turned everything out i mean everything went everything fell in place you know i prayed about it asked him what to do next and uh he gave me step by step by step it was amazing i never ran a campaign before this was my first time yet everybody tells me i made the right steps and everybody now looks at me like i'm an expert but to make a long story short uh i won i won by 20 votes uh, 880 to 900. So I'm now city council in um, the city of Montgomery, Alabama. It's four years. <laughs> you know, funny thing, I was just running because I was mad because nobody would step up and, and come, you know, and, and come out. No politician would come out and, and step up and, and, and speak out against this. It was just, we felt like we were by ourselves. So as a result, I'm now city council. And I really was just running to make a statement. But now um, I got a, <laughs> I got four years. So uh, more than anything, I definitely need to read every day. But um, when I got to, when I started running, well, what happened was I was already reading in the evening. So it got later and later and later to the point where I couldn't really keep up with everything. So um, I ended up not reading. Uh, like I said, I got four is um, June or May 23rd. And uh, camp campaign got hard because every day I was going out. Like I said, it was just me, had no money. So I just knocked on every door, just about. And when I would come back at night, I would just be tired and I would go to sleep because it back was hurting. It was just rough. And then whenever I felt better, I went back out again. So I'm um, down to city council. I don't know why God got me down there praying about it, trying to figure out what to do. I already got people on the radio attacking me, called me all kinds of things and stuff. You know, so, but hey, that that's comes with the territory. But more than anything, like I said, the day is, the actual day is January the 4th, 2016. So even though it's 365 days, I guess 365 days of actual reading. And so it's going to go over. I got about 200 something days here in this year. Got a lot planned out. Got a lot to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read through it because I started it and I'm going to finish it. I don't care how long it takes. I don't think it's going to take me three years to do it, what it takes in one year. 
but I'm gonna get this done um, because in the end I want to have a uh, I got the YouTube channel if you're looking at it um, I want to put something out there for my kids to see uh, I'm gonna upload all these and keep them on my hard drive you know so that my grandkids can at least if they don't destroy it I don't anticipate this stand out there on the on the internet um, you know the way things are going but um, it'll be a, a copy that we we'll have that uh, you know in case they confiscate the Bibles or something we'll still have a soft copy of something that we can look at and, and go on going forward but at any rate hopefully uh, somebody's reading this and um, it's 67 years <laughs> and I've been gone a long time and then they looking at it and it's interesting but once again uh, I'm city council now uh, got some important stuff coming up learning every day so praying that um, I do a good job and the basis of doing a good job at city council is definitely uh, staying in the word every day and making sure that you you know put God first um, and that's the most important thing because the Bible says what proper man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul so I don't care what people say about me I'm not in politics for money I really don't even care and matter of fact um, I haven't even decided if I'm going to run after my four years um, I know I'm not going to be uh, <laughs> I don't plan on being in politics you know in my 80s you know still out there trying to stay in office it just that's not me um, I'm 52 now so you know if I run one more time and win I'll be 60 that would be perfect time for probably um, you know getting out I got a lot of business things I want to work on so hopefully those things are paying out and then maybe I can retire at 60 which would be great and um, do well when I say retire it's always something to do but just not getting up in the morning to worry about putting food on the table so it's got to line things up right now so anyway today is uh, 143 and um, of the read the Bible 365 days and um, right now We've gotten, um, let's see, we're reading 1 Chronicles 19 to 21, John chapter 8, verse 1 through 27, King James Version. Okay, got to make sure we're recording. Wasn't sure if I was recording at all. <laughs> I didn't want to start over. Anyway, 1 Chronicles chapter 19. Now it came to pass after this that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, died, and the son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. And David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. So that the servants of David came into the land of the children of Ammon to Hanan to comfort him. But the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanan, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Are not his servants come unto thee for to search? And to overthrow and to spy out the land. Wherefore, Hannah took David's servants and shaved them, and cut off the garments in the midst of, in the midst hard by their buttocks, and sent them away. Then there went certain and told David how the men were served, and he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, "Tarry, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return." And when the children of Ammon saw that they had made themselves odious to David, Hanan and the children of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire them, chariots and horsemen out of Mesopotamia and out of Syria, Mecca, and out of Zobah. So they hired thirty and two thousand chariots, and the king of Mecca and his people who came and pitched before Midabah, and the children of Ammon gathered themselves together for from their cities and came to battle. And when David heard of it, he sent Jacob and all of the host of the mighty men and the children of Ammon came out, out and put the battle in array before the gate of the city. And the kings that were come were by themselves in the field. Now when Joab saw that the battle was sent against him before and behind, he chose out of the choice of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered unto the hand of Abishai, his brother, and they sent themselves in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will help thee. Be of good courage and let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people and for the cities of our God. And let the Lord do that which is good in his sight. 
So Joab and the people that were with him drew nigh before the Syrians unto the battle, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, they likewise fled before Abishai, his brother, and entered into the city. Then Joab came to Jerusalem, and when the Syrians saw that they were put to the worst before Israel, they sent messengers and drew forth the Syrians that were beyond the river and shot Pat, the captain of the host of Hadra, Hadarezer, went before them. And it was told David, and he gathered all Israel and passed over Jordan and came upon them and set the battle in array against them. So when David put the battle in array against the Syrians, they fought with them. But the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians 7,000 men which fought in chariots and 40,000 footmen and killed Shobach, the captain of the host. And when the servants of Hadareza saw that they were put to the worst before Israel, they made peace with David and became his servants. Neither would the Syrians have the children of Ammon any more. Chapter 20. And it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time that kings go out to battle, Joab led forth the power of the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon and came and besieged Rabah. But David tarried at Jerusalem, and Joab smote Rabah and destroyed it. And David took the crown of their king from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold. And there were precious stones on, in it, and it was set upon David's head. And he brought also exceeding much spoil out of the city. And he brought out the people that were in it and cut them with saws and with harrows of iron and with axes. Even so dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon. And David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Sebekai the Hushethite slew Siphi, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. And there was war again with Philistines, and Elhanan, the son of Jer, slew Lamai, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. And yet again, there was war at Gath. There was a man of great stature whose fingers and toes were four and twenty six on each hand and six on each foot and he also was the son of the giant but when he defied Israel Jonathan the son of Shimea David's brother slew him these were born unto the giant in Gath and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants chapter 21 and, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel and David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Israel from Bathsheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me, that I may know it. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as they be. But my lord the king, are they not all my lord's servants? Why then doth the, my lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause to trespass, a cause of trespass to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab, wherefore Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David. And all they of Israel were a thousand thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew sword. And Judah was four hundred three score and ten thousand men that drew sword. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab and God was displeased with this thing therefore he smote Israel and David said unto God I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing but now I beseech thee do away the iniquity of thy servant for I have done very foolishly and the Lord spake to Gad David's seer saying go and tell David saying thus said the Lord I offer thee three things choose thee one of them that I may do it unto thee so Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee, either three years famine, or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thy enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coast of Israel. 
And I therefore advised thyself that word I should bring again to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent, pestil sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel 70,000 men. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the Lord and the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having drawn having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel who were clothed in sackcloth fell upon their faces. And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people, that they should be plagued. Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David, that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ormond, the Jebusite. And David went up at the saying of God, Gad, which he spake in the name of the Lord. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel and his four sons with him, with him hid themselves. Now Ormond was threshing wheat. And as David came to Ormond, Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David and went out of the threshing floor and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of thy threshing floor that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou should grant it me for the full price that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said unto David, Take it to thee and let thy Lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings and the threshing instrument for wood and the wheat for the meat offering, I give it all. And King David said to Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I would not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord, and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. And the Lord commanded the angel, and he put his word again in the sheath thereof. And that time when David saw that the Lord had answered in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness and the altar, altar of the burnt offering were at that season in the high place at Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid because of the word sword of the angel of the Lord. John chapter 8, verse 1 through 27. Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote in the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none by the, but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record thyself, 
thou record, thou record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. Yet and yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he has said, Whether I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are from his world, I am not of his world. I said therefore to you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them. He understood not that he spake to them of the Father.